Welcome to Crunch Time, a program dedicated to helping you survive the crunch times in your life, whether they are caused by accidents, natural disasters, poverty, economic recession, depression, or all-out economic collapse, or whether they are caused by your realization that today's food supply is being contaminated by artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and genetically modified organisms, and over-processing of crops into what can hardly be called food. We want to help you through the crunch times in your future by teaching you what we have learned about organic gardening, food storage, and food preparation. We'll bring you into our kitchen and into our garden and share with you what we have learned, hopefully, before your crunch times arrive. Now here is Chef Francois. Well, we had the heavy frost last night. It uh, came over to check on the uh, hoop house, make sure everything was okay. Of course it wasn't. Door was wide open from the wind blowing it open. But I also noticed that the peanuts, here's peanuts right here, it all turned from green to, I don't know, dark green, black. I've already harvested these here. And the ones that were over in that area, and this area, uh, the ones inside the greenhouse didn't suffer any frost, so I didn't do anything there. But now, I'm going to uh, harvest the peanuts in this area right here this stuff out of the way now this green right here is not the peanuts it's the uh, other stuff so anyway what I'm gonna do is just dig right down underneath like this pull the peanuts up and you'll see that we've got four peanut pods which I'm just going to toss on there to, to dry and uh, toss the plant to the side so got six or eight on this one. Looks like a cricket been eating on one of them. I certainly don't remember seeing this many flowers on the peanut plants this year. I'm surprised there's that many peanuts on them. Sometimes you can just yank them and pick them up, but you do that, you risk losing some of the pods down under the ground. Right, that's not a pod, but this one is. So it's good to run your fingers through and make sure you got them all. Okay, we're going to go right in there. Just pick it up like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, if we examine on the plant, part way up each branch, the root started right here and came up. And there was plant, and it spread out to the side, and part way out on each branch, there was a flower. And after the flower pollinated, it uh, drove a little 
spiky piece of branch like this down into the ground and at the end of it grew the peanut. So that's how you harvest these. You let them sit in the tray for a couple days in the sun to help dry. Knock the dry dirt off and help cure them. Yeah, that's what we got. So, out of this one area right here, we had enough peanuts to cover one of these tops completely. So we had, I don't know, 20 plants, average of 15 to 20 peanuts on each plant, about 500 peanuts, or pods thousand peanuts. This whole area down here is peanuts and uh, I'm gonna let that set for a couple more days go get through the next dry spell and see if those leaves die or rejuvenate and I'll see if the peanuts are a little more mature by the time I finally harvest those. Meanwhile, our peas are starting to grow up my fence. Frost didn't hurt those a bit. The rutabagas are doing fine. I pulled out peanuts in between them. One rutabaga right over there obviously died. Maybe from some kind of cabbage worm or something. These over here are doing okay. Pull these corn roots out and the uh, and the dandelions. Boy, those corn roots are hard to pull up. To use a shovel I guess like I did inside the hoop house when I got him out of there all right we are done for the day let the peanuts dry in the Sun in the greenhouse and these tomato plants I'm gonna leave there to keep the weeds down these uh, fennel plants even though they have gone to seed already. Some good seeds up here. There's still some fresh growth down here that tastes real good. Still tastes like licorice. I don't know if that's a perennial plant. I'm, I'm gonna let some of them grow. See if they go through the winter. Garlic is starting to grow really tall. Spinach that Shao planted stayed right out in the frost last night. Didn't get covered at all. Survived just fine. There's daikon plants over here that haven't started coming up yet. They're doing just fine. My peppers over here. The uh, fruits that were on the plant pretty much got all mush. Strawberries in the back are doing just fine. Peanuts, like I said, the leaves are all darkened, but I'm gonna leave this patch for another week at least to see what uh, happens to it. But these pepper plants I'm probably gonna have to either cut out or dig out. But I'm gonna look a couple days from now and see if they rejuvenate the plant at all or whether they just are dead already. We shall find out. Kiwi, female plant, male plant. The frost pretty much got the leaves to go down, but it's a perennial plant, so that will continue growing next year, just like all the other 
trees, the bitter cucumber plant that Shao stripped yesterday of all the cucumbers, that uh, pretty much dying. Let's look and see how the uh, stevia plants. The grape plant pretty much died. The stevia, I should cut this back and take all the stevia with me home because it's pretty much dead, I think. I've already stripped all those. And these, I left one where I did cut a few strips, put them into a bucket to see if they would grow well. And uh, they seem to be growing. And Chow has now taken that to the, the greenhouse up at ACC. I'll just leave that there for now. Alrighty. Darn oh, still doing it determined that the peanuts are not going to recover from the frost. Now there's some green leaves down underneath that are not up on top. So maybe the stems are, see there's some green leaves way down. But the frost got deep enough, I think it killed it enough. I need to uh, dig those up. Garlic is doing really well. Six, eight inches tall. Shao's spinach is doing real well. His daikons are doing real well. And our peas are doing real well. All of this stuff except the peanuts were planted after um, after September first when we started building this hoop house. So I'm going to take off the securing clips. Put them back on. Underneath. I'll leave the one further up there until I get up there. Okay, I have put new clips on the bottom instead of the tape on the bottom and it's rolling up a lot better now. And so I'm going to roll it up a ways and try to keep the, the uh, wrinkles out of it. Sides rolling up nicely. It's all the way to the top. I might come down just a half a turn. Like that. Alright, let's go roll up the other side. I 
All right, we have the back side rolled up on the hoop house. Now I'm gonna roll up the front. And I'm gonna put some of these clips on the bottom of the curtain just to uh, even things out and possibly secure it a little better. I should start over in the middle, I guess. See that these are about there. So from here, uh, that's not far enough up. Uh, boy, that's a tough one. I'll leave it. Try it like that. Take a couple clips off of this end. And we'll start rolling it up.
Okay, we have the hoop house all uncovered. Boy, the uh, root big is that we're down in here. Kind of died in there. This whole section. Anyway, these rutabagas out here are a little older than the ones inside, but the ones inside were from seeds September 4th. And the ones outside were from transplants from my other house that grew from seeds from earlier. There's got to be a cabbage worm on this plant right here. And maybe that one. Anyway, we've got everything rolled up all the way to the top. And all the sides pulled in. We got plenty of air, plenty of light, plenty of water. Now we got to pick up these and put them in the workshop so that uh, next time we have frost we can bring them right back out here. And uh, I think I'm going to find a place where I can hang them in the workshop in order. One, two, three, four, five. So let's go see what I can find. Okay, I've been uh, digging up my my uh, peanuts from this big patch over here that froze during the frost. I've had some plants that had as many as 56 pods that were big enough to use, and other smaller pods that were. Two, four, five, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-three, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-two. 35, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 4, 5, 6, 48, 52, plus we got these little pods that aren't, aren't big enough to do anything with because they're not mature enough. We could have got another week out of the season by covering this during the frost. We could have had a lot more. These have got peanuts going out six, eight inches out the branches and then down. The ones that we had over there by the corn, we only had peanuts within an inch or two from the main root. So you've got the main root down the middle and then the branches go out and the peanuts go down from there. Well, I'm done picking up all the peanuts from this little area right here which is basically six foot by five foot. 30 square feet of garden, I have produced all of these peanuts. There was, let me see, five, I think five rows with five or six in each row. So out of each plant, I averaged 30 to 40 peanuts, or pods I should say. Speaking of which, there's still some in here. That's going to make some really rich uh, compost as well. That's full of nitrogen because peanuts are legume and they put nitrogen into the soil. So if I planted something right now in here, especially if I could keep it covered for the winter, it would be a really good soil. It's nice and moist right now because the cover was complete sun couldn't get in there and dry it out. Yeah, 
and the peanuts that we got from the other sections in the garden are over there. Alright, so a lot of the dirt's coming out. This is how I'm laying out the peanuts to dry. This is all the peanuts that came out of that area, five foot by six foot, right there. Those there are the ones that we had before that uh, were in a couple other little areas over there and over there. And they're going to dry here in the sun and the air can get around them a lot better. And over here we've got ones that are drying too. So, here's our peanut crop for 2015 of October. I have pulled up the uh, peanuts that have frozen and died in this area. Pulled up all the tomatoes in that area. I have uncovered the hoop house because we've got a good warm week coming up. I think it's about time I share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible in Romans 3.23, all of us are sinners and we do not measure up to God's perfection. Romans 6.23 says, the penalty of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, Jesus came to earth as a man to pay the price for the sins of mankind. Romans 10.13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved from the penalty of eternal death. The payment Jesus made for our sins is only available to those who believe and trust in his fulfillment of God's promise to save the world from their sins. If you want to take part of the resurrection of life, you must believe and accept the gift of eternal life that Jesus has provided. Or you could reject the gift and take part in the resurrection of damnation unto eternal death. God loves you and has provided a means of eternal life if you will believe and accept the gift. I have accepted, and my life has been changed, as the Bible tells us it would. I'd like you to consider joining me and all of God's disciples in eternal life. If you want more information, you can email me at crunchtime at roadrunner.com. Until next week, God bless you and yours. And we'll see you again on Crunch Time with Chef Francois.